treatment facility and a PVC plant both upstream so the mud and the dust could be toxic. And all the Harkins, thank you for being there and telling your story. President Biden was asked by CBS News today whether Netanyahu was holding up a peace deal to influence our election. Well, the president said he doesn't know. But in the meantime, the fighting rages on against Hamas to the south and Hezbollah to the north in Lebanon, where thousands, tens of thousands of Americans are tonight. CBS MTS Tayeb spoke to a U.S. veteran who is having a hard time getting out. The last time Iran's supreme leader led Friday prayers in Tehran was nearly five years ago. With the barrel of a machine gun in hand, he had a message for Israel. We did it once, he said, and we'll do it again. Ayatollah Khamenei was talking about Iran's ballistic missile attack on Israel Tuesday night. Retaliation for the killing of his close ally, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, in this massive strike in Beirut one week ago. Since then, Israel has been targeting the group's strongholds relentlessly devastating civilian areas and displacing more than 1.2 million people. And I sat in the living room floor with my wallet, my phone, my passport, just in case in any moment I had to run. Shaniak Jaldari eventually did have to run. The NYU grad student and Marine Corps veteran was in Beirut visiting friends when this happened. The building right across from the one that I was living in was struck. Were struck. Yes. The U.S. and other countries have started evacuating citizens, but Jaldri has had a hard time getting in touch with the American embassy in Beirut. Have you actually spoken to an actual person at the embassy? No, absolutely not. I'm, I'm constantly going on Twitter, looking at the embassy of Beirut's uh, Twitter page, and they haven't updated anyone in the last four or five days. Four or five days? Yes. yes. So you're really in this information black hole. Yeah. I just feel like they just don't care if you are in America or not. Now, Jaldri still has no idea how he will get home, as Israeli strikes across Lebanon only intensify. So far, over 2,000 people have been killed in the attacks, a figure the U.N. is calling totally unacceptable. Nora. And Tayeb, thank you. Nearly one year has passed since the October 7th attacks that sparked the catastrophic war between Israel and Hamas. To mark the important milestone, a new documentary, We Will Dance Again, tells the story of October 7th through the eyes of survivors of the Nova Music Festival and through the body cam and GoPro footage from Hamas terrorists obtained by filmmakers. One survivor, Eitan, describes how Hamas threw grenades into the crowded shelter where he was hiding and then how he threw them back out over and over again. But then Hamas opened fire. They came back in. <laughs> And then they started shooting everyone. They left. I looked left and right. And I thought everyone was acting or playing dead so that they wouldn't get kidnapped. But after a minute or two, or when people weren't lifting their heads or waking up, I realized that I was sitting in a pile of bodies. We Will Dance Again from See It Now Studios is now streaming.